If you couldn't tell by now, myopia is a topic I am quite passionate about because not only do we see the prevalence increasing globally, but also because I have been personally living with the condition my whole life. In this video, I will give my professional perspective on whether we should view myopia as merely just an optical condition simply correct by glasses and contacts, or is it in fact a disease? Watch on to learn more. Hey YouTube, my name is Dr. Natalie Chai. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome. You'll find that this channel brings you the latest science-based education and treatments in dry eye disease, myopia management, and specialty contact lenses to help you understand why it should matter to you for optimal eye health, function, comfort, and even beauty. It's still an ongoing debate and there are still two schools of thought around whether myopia should be viewed as just a refractive error or if it's truly a disease. The answer the answer to this question is an important one to get to the bottom of because what we choose to believe will influence how we approach this treatment for our patients. I briefly touched upon this in one of my earlier videos, but I want to really dive into it a few layers deep and unpack it a bit more. Let's look at a definition of disease. A disease is an abnormal condition affecting a living organism. Diseases are generally understood to be medical conditions that involve a pathological process associated with a specific set of symptoms. This is from the Infectious Disease News from 2019. Now, some schools of thought still argue that myopia is an adaptation to the information or technology age and increased time indoors. Though there is certainly truth to this, this adaptation in response is a process causing pathology on the back end. Any of us with myopia knows the obvious symptom is blurry vision uncorrected. However, do you know that even with appropriate refractive correction, myopia continues to place an individual at an increased risk of sight-threatening disease. Nothing is wrong now, but it can happen years down the road. And that's the hardest thing, especially in healthcare. If we don't immediately see or experience an issue now, we equate that to having no problem. But that is where preventative medicine comes in. And so let me remind you, the prevalence of myopia is increasing worldwide. It has been predicted that by the year 2050, the total global population with myopia will be 50%. That's translating to 5 billion people. Yes, billion. And of those, high myopia will affect 9.8% of the global population. That is a total of 938 million people. So high myopia is when a person's myopia is at the value of minus five diopters or more of spherical correction as defined in 2015 by the World Health Organization. Okay, this is the part of the video I really want to get into. I will now go into the top four ocular diseases that those with myopia have an increased risk of developing. Let's get right into it. Number one, open angle glaucoma. I'm sure most of you have heard of glaucoma at some point. Glaucoma is also known as the silent killer of sight because this disease has virtually no early warning signs or symptoms to the patient until a considerable amount of damage has been done. Now, this is one of many reasons why you should in fact visit your optometrist or ophthalmologist regularly because we perform screening tests and ocular health examinations to look for these types of eye diseases. There are many different variations of this disease. In this particular category, open angle simply means that the drainage area between the cornea, which is the front part of the eye, and the iris, which is the colored part of the eye, is wide open. However, there's an abnormality to the drainage canals called the trabecular meshwork becoming clogged over time. Now, two thirds of patients with primary open angle glaucoma have elevated eye pressures of greater than 21 millimeters of mercury, while one third can present with totally normal eye pressures. Now, this is the reason why that dreaded puff of air test is extremely necessary as a screening tool. Over time, there will be gradual damage to the optic nerve, which will translate to peripheral or side vision loss. With significant damage, this is where patients will complain of becoming more clumsy, such as missing stairs, going up or down stairs, having difficulty shoulder checking when driving, or noticing portions of words missing when they're reading. The progression of the disease can lead to tunnel vision if not treated and managed effectively. Now, some risk factors of glaucoma include older age, a positive family history, African-American ethnicity, thin central corneal thickness, systemic high blood pressure, diabetes, and myopia. 
In a systemic review, it was demonstrated that the risk of developing glaucoma was nearly 50% higher in individuals with moderate to high myopia compared to those with low myopia. Number two, cataracts. Now, everybody gets cataracts at some point in their lives, right? You are correct. The development of cataracts is considered part of the natural aging process of life. With that said, cataract formation alongside the eventual need for cataract surgery is more common among people with myopia. Cataracts are when the clear lens of the eye gradually becomes cloudy, effectively decreasing the clarity of a person's vision. A cataract forms when the tissue and protein make of the lens changes, causing it to lose its translucence, becoming more opaque. Cataract formation is also linked to unprotected and excessive exposure to UVA and UVB in sunlight. The radiation can trigger a quicker response to the changes seen in cataract formation. So everyone, please wear sunglasses on a sunny and gloomy day when you're outside. Regarding myopia, researchers suggest that the longer axial length of the eye may prevent nutrient delivery to the backside of the lens. So patients with moderate to high myopia can develop cataracts earlier than those with no refractive error. In in addition, those with high myopia are 17% more likely to require cataract surgery than those with moderate myopia. Cataract surgery is also more complex with higher risk of complication and slower recovery times in those with moderate to high myopia as well. Number three, retinal detachment. Now your eye doctor has probably asked you to watch out for flashes of light, increased floaters, or a curtain or veil over your vision at some point. These are symptoms associated with a possible retinal detachment. This is an emergency situation where the thin layer of the tissue called the retina at the back of the eye pulls away, which could cause significant vision loss and at times blindness. A retinal tear or retinal hole usually precedes it and can be present for many years prior to the actual detachment episode. Now this is why it is important to have regular dilated fundus examinations with your eye doctor because that is what we are searching for. The risk of developing a retinal detachment is five or six times greater in people with high myopia compared to those with low myopia. People with high myopia have longer eyes, which means that the retinal tissue is stretched out over a larger area and is prone to tearing. This is a very scary situation and most patients are quite shocked at the symptoms when it happens. A retinal surgeon is required to intervene using multiple surgical techniques with the ultimate goal of reattaching the retinal tissue as best as possible. The technique used is highly dependent on the type and severity of the detachment, the location, and also whether the macula, which is the part of the eye responsible for our central 2020 vision, was involved or not. Number four, last but not least, myopic maculopathy or degeneration. This is the most serious irreversible vision threatening complication and the leading cause of visual impairment and blindness caused by myopia. It is in the name. It is the gradual breakdown or wearing out of the macular region of the eye. Again, responsible for our central detailed colored vision. There are various clinical presentations of myopic maculopathy and it all stems from the retina retinal tissue being so thin that it could cause cracks in the deeper layers causing the cells to gradually die off or atrophy. Bleeding can also occur in the center of the macula because of the formation of new, abnormal, but weak blood vessels. This is called choroidal neovascularization or CNV. Individuals with high myopia can cause bulging on the backside of the eye, and this is called a posterior staphyloma. This could lead to issues where the retinal layers in the macular region starts to split, causing fluid accumulation or sometimes even a macular hole. Over time, Time, these areas of dead tissue can gradually grow and coalesce together into one big region. This is termed geographic atrophy. All of these complications have potential detrimental visual effects as now it is affecting your central vision. The risk of macular degeneration due to myopia rises sharply with age and increasing myopia, multiplying twofold and up to 10 times the higher the myopia. So have I convinced you yet that myopia is in fact 
a disease. These are serious issues that have real life complications causing potential blindness. To me, it is more than just an evolutionary adaptation. It is one that will have significant negative impact on our children, economy, and healthcare system if we don't do something about it now. In the words of some of the world leading authorities in myopia management, every diopter or step counts. For example, if a child ends up with a minus four diopter prescription in their adulthood versus a minus five, we've done our jobs. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. This is an ongoing conversation and there is so much we know from the research, but also so much we don't know and are continually tweaking our approach. That's it for me, everybody. If you enjoy learning about all things myopia management, dry eye disease, and specialty contact lenses, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell to make sure you don't miss my new videos every second Thursday. Take care of your eyes, everybody, and we'll see you next time.